This is an LED light bulb. It is a Utilitech Pro. Now, Utilitechs are sold in Lowe's hardware stores. I believe that that's a house brand for them. This particular bulb draw, draws 10 watts of power and it puts out 800 lumens. It had a, a part number on it of LA19DM. Anyway, I paid uh, several dollars for this thing and it failed after, oh, about six months, which is kind of, that's kind of ridiculous. I mean, that's pretty expensive if they're, you know, you pay, pay several dollars for something like this and have it fail after just a few months. I mean, I'd be better off just using incandescent lights. So I decided to see if I couldn't tear this thing down a little bit to see what had, what had gone wrong. Well, I twisted this and it just popped right off. And here we have a whole bunch of LEDs inside of it. And uh, two power lines supplying this disc. Now let's see how much further we can get into this thing. Okay, I pulled out these two screws and desoldered these two wires. Hmm. Little heat, there's a kind of a metal disc here. I guess that's a heat sink. It's got some heat sink compound on it connected to that disc. There's a circuit board hiding in here. What I guess which we would call potting compound. They just they just drop that circuit in there and they just pour this gook all over it. It's going to make it pretty hard to take it apart and figure out what's going on. One of the reasons I took an interest in this is I've seen other complaints about this device failing prematurely. Ah, uh, this this the screw here has been sort of uh, it's been crimped on. I'm going to probably have to rip this thing rip this thing apart in order to expose the insides. And clearly this, this thing was not designed to be taken apart, obviously. I've used my Dremel Moto tool to cut off part of the threads here. Just enough to where I could get a wrench on there and pull this thing apart. And it is just full of this potting compound. It just embeds everything. I just hope I can keep this thing intact enough so I can figure out what's going on without... I mean, look at this stuff. There's just tons of it. Starting to see some electronics. I'll keep digging. Well, I took my Dremel Moto tool to this thing. There's just nothing else I can do. Oh my, look at that. It is just a cast, a solid cast of this potting material. There's a circuit board buried in there somewhere. I'm just going to have to chop away and see if I can expose it without totally destroying it. Hmm, I'm about 15 minutes into chipping away at this. Got a fair amount of it exposed. And I got all this. Hmm. I really would like to know how this thing works. I'm going to keep at it. Okay, uh, I've pretty much gotten this thing dug out from all of that material. Look at this incredible mountain of, of stuff. This rubbery filling material. All just for this. Okay, I want to get rid of all this now. Get a closer look at this thing. Here's our circuit board, a little closer, with all of this material removed. 
this is the input right here. This is where the AC comes in, this point and this point. Okay, little cap between those points. Here's a one amp fuse. That fuse is actually good. Uh, and then that leads right into this chip, which is ABS6. That's a full wave rectifier. Okay, inputs there and there, output there and there. Um, leading into those inputs are these two resistors. Let's see if I can show. Um, two, 100, two 150 ohm resistors. Now, this one is not conducting. This resistor is open, and that maybe maybe that's why this thing failed. But and if you look real close, you can kind of see a little scar on it. And then from the output of this full wave rectifier, it goes into this, this daughter board here. Not sure exactly what it's doing. A bunch of big uh, diodes, a big old transistor. Some other things on the back. I'm guessing that that's some sort of a voltage regulator. Now this chip here is the brains of the operation. This chip is called SSL21082. This chip is a, uh, a driver for LED lights. It's made by NXP Semiconductors. Then on the output here, we've got your, your standard uh, diode and, and big old capacitor. So that's it. As far as I can tell, the only part I found bad is this resistor right here. Presumably that's what killed this thing. This is the data sheet on that um, driver chip for the LED lights. Probably this is used in lots of people's uh, LED light products. Um, quick scan down. There's a block diagram of this device. And the pinout. This is the version we have right here. That pinout. And here we have a block diagram circuit. There's our, there's our rectifier, and that's where I think our problem is, the resistors leading into it. Here's the output, there's our capacitor and uh, diode. And in our case, we've got two parallel tracks of seven diodes each. Here's another uh, reference circuit design provided by uh, NXP. Here's our driver chip again. Um, and here's our input. And that's where I think our problem probably lies. And uh, there's our output again. There's our diodes. Here's a disk of LEDs. Uh, there's 14 on this disk, it appears to be divided into two parallel circuits, seven LEDs on each. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I thought I would see if I could turn this on with an external power supply. I tried a two point. I tried twenty four volts. That didn't do it. The next, the next closest thing I had was a thirty, and uh, it's probably a little on the high side. So I'm gonna have to keep this really brief. Yeah, see that lit it up pretty quick. Don't want to put it on too long. I might burn them out. I'm not sure what the correct voltage is, but somewhere between uh, 24 and 30 volts. I found this page uh, online and um, white LED, 4 volts, 
seven white diodes in series times four volts each, that should be 28 volts. Uh, we were not able to turn it on at 24 volts. We turned it on very brightly at 30 volts. Just for the fun of it, I went ahead and soldered in a resistor here, bypassing that, uh, that blown out resistor, reestablishing continuity. I wonder if I could make this thing work again. Okay, I've kind of jerry-rigged this thing back together again. Got some wires dangling out of that. There's the, there's the remnants of the uh, original bulb sort of, sort of forced back together again and carefully screwed into the socket of this lamp. And let's see what happens. Holy smokes, it's alive, it's alive! Wow, it works. It's covered up with, with, with this diffuser here so it isn't quite so bright. Still pretty darn bright. Okay, so that was it. It was that blown resistor. Not that I'm going to be able to use this again. I mean, clearly I can't use it like that. But that's it. I was able to troubleshoot it down to an individual component, replace it, and get the thing running. Fantastic. Well, um, I didn't think I'd be able to do it, but yeah, I got this thing running again. Amazing. So the problem is this little resistor right here coming out or just coming right out of the input. I mean, this is, you know, this is before you've even reached the uh, full wave rectifier. Two little resistors. Now, when I, when I look at it real close, I can see that even the other resistor has got some little cracks in it. I suspect that these resistors either were too, too weak for the job or they were subjected to too much heat or whatever, whatever it is, that's what caused them to fail. Uh, and I, I suspect that this may be the cause of, of many of these failures, those two little resistors. Now, um, I seriously suggest that you don't do what I just did. Um, <laughs> That was that was a little over the top, I think. For I mean, this 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 is actually a couple hours of work at this point for a, a bulb I could buy for what ten bucks, five bucks, who knows? Uh, my curiosity got the best of me, and I just couldn't couldn't help myself. Obviously, I can't use it in its present state. Um, I think LED is a wonderful invention. LED lighting is saving the world tons of electric power and therefore tons of CO2 in our atmosphere. But you got to make things uh, last a little longer than that. I mean, six months, come on. This thing should last for decades. So uh, a good idea gone bad because of uh, poor manufacturing, poor quality components.